Hey all you people, part two. Um, thank you to my friends and family who are probably watching us, all four of you, I appreciate you. Um, I'm gonna show you how to do a dark blue smoky eye, but I'm still getting the format on this correct, so I'm gonna do a little intro of like each part that I'm doing, what I'm using, give you my technique for it, do it, and then we'll come back after each step just to not film a 45 minute video. Here we go. One, you're gonna moisturize, which I just completed doing. You should not do like I do because I use a scented lotion. It's not good for your skin, but my skin isn't sensitive, so I kind of just use whatever I have. And then you're gonna take a moistened beauty blender and your foundation. And in this case, I'm using Born This Way in porcelain. This is a look where there's going to be a lot of fallout because I'm using dark shades. Um, I'm actually going to take the, the foundation and I'm putting it all up here and on my eyes and just right here in this middle part of my face where the makeup is immediately going to be spread. Just this general area, I'm going to stop right about here because the fallout will be everywhere and I want to be able to just wipe that off and then continue with the makeup instead of having to go backtrack and wipe it off of an already makeup base. It's not going to be ideal. What I'm going to do is put on some shape tape and again, since I'm only doing the top half of my base right now, I'm just going to put a few dots here and blend it in. Normally I would do this on my nose and under my eyes as well, but we'll save that for later when I do the rest of my face makeup. For now we're just, again, top half. The top half of my face, we are going to take this uh, CoverGirl Queen Professional, that's totally backwards, you can't see it, but it is in... This doesn't even have a shade, it just says light, translucent light, clean professional powder, it's just a translucent powder. Just pat it on. I like to kind of use a stippling motion, cover that up, and I'm not going to put it on my eyes, obviously, because we are going to be putting shadow there. So we're just patting it down onto the base makeup up there. Brows, we are going to take this little brush and brush off the excess powder from the brow. Bring it back. And then we're going to take this Morphe M432 and we are going to pat my brows with a dark eyeshadow. Patting the brows with the dark shade of brown in the James Charles palette just to kind of give it um, kind of a foundation of where I'm going to put the brow gel because I will eventually use this e.l.f. brow gel on top to define it. Basically I'm drawing in the lines of the base of my eyebrow to start kind of giving it shape just the bottom half of that and I'm putting the focus of the product on the bottom so I can brush upward and away Just like that. And then we're going to kind of keep going. And then I'm going to use a slightly lighter shade to do this edge here. Oh, and this is where it gets tricky because you have to, well, I, in my case, because my eyebrow is sparse um, doesn't really grow in by itself up there we're drawing kind of a top line for it and you don't want it to look goopy so you can tell that my eyebrow doesn't grow there you can see um they're a hot mess and this whole process is kind of like that until the very end I'm kind of just this is a wet paper towel, by the way, kind of to erase any mistakes that I might make or overdrawing that I might have done. <sighs> the tops are different um, thicknesses. 
So I'm kind of going in and like brushing that one down a little bit. I'm probably going to thicken this boy up on this side. Um, but this is just mid progress. So you can kind of see it gets worse before it gets better. Bro, like a brow whiz or something. I don't remember what it's called, to be honest. It was from Benefit. I didn't really like the gel part, so I kept this and I use it now with this e.l.f. gel. Um, I'm dipping one edge of it in that and then coming at the bottom of the brow and drawing that in. Overdrawing it, I guess, a little bit. Kind of doing the same thing we did with the powder initially, but just really cementing it now with this gel. And we're going to go around and... Oh, God. This is why I didn't want to film me doing my eyebrows, because it's just... It's not informational. It's me kind of dicking around until they look okay. So, I'll be right back. So, this one's done. That one looks fine. Some would say it's boxy. I like to draw them that way. So, we're going to take this gel and kind of go from the bottom upwards kind of to make it look like hairs a little bit but mostly just in an effort to cover up that spot where you could tell there's not hair and it's not going to look realistic so it's not really the point but it will at least look consistent and that's what i'm looking for I'm serious, it is just me dicking around until they look even, at least somewhat. Okay, so now that it's kind of mostly filled in, I'm going to go back with this powder. And just fill it in further so that it looks... Um... Not patchy. That's what we'll go with. So this is... As even as it gets, and I probably look a little bit crazy because I don't have the rest of my makeup on. But this is my eyebrows. So I'm to start applying eyeshadow, I put on the Urban Decay... Urban Decay... Eyeshadow Primer Potion in Original. Um, I'm just gonna put this all over. Like this. And I just use... Not a ton, but not that much, and I rubbed it with my finger because I don't have a brush that I would like to use for this, and I can also get a better feel for how much and where it's going, and use the edge of my finger to kind of clean up the bottom of my brow too. With a brow bone, we're going to take this. Lorac Pro Contour Palette. We're taking the light shade again with a big fluffy brush. This is the E27 from Morphe. And we're just brushing that all over the top. Just sort of as a base for my brow bone. And then for this actual look, it's not going to be with the James Charles palette. It's going to be the Morphe 35B V. That's really small. You can't read it, but it looks like this. And we are going to be right over here this entire time. 
gonna use the Jaclyn Hill palette and I'm just gonna be using the browns here. Probably even this guy too. Um, brown is what we're gonna do first because brown is blendable. Black is not super blendable. You blend it into brown, but blending black and blue by themselves without putting brown first, you're, you're gonna have a bad time. So we're gonna start with this guy, then this guy, this guy, then this guy, and then this is black. We'll play with that a little bit later, but first we just need to lay a foundation of brown. So I'm gonna do a little bit of that, come back, show you what it looks like. So, humble beginnings. That's all I have to say. We're gonna take this e.l.f. brush. It is kind of just a fluffy, blunted brush. Um, makes it easier for blending upward. We are tapping that into the shadow and then onto my eye like this. And I know I didn't put base makeup on just because I didn't want to deal with cleaning up the fallout off of an already makeup face. Um, but still, I'm gonna try not to get shadow everywhere. So patting it on helps keep it from getting everywhere. I'm gonna swipe up a little bit and then kind of go in a circular upwards motion. I wanna focus all of it down here and then drag it upwards. And we're not dragging it past that spot where my eyelids bend. So, keeping it down here and brushing it a little bit upward. We're still just using the lightest brown of the four that I showed you. So essentially, just putting a brown base on this and blending it upwards. So now we're going to add a darker brown and I'll be right back when I did that. So we've made it a little bit darker, taking the second shade out of the four, placing it down here, and slowly building it outwards into the lighter shade, making sure that it is gradual and you're not just slapping it on there. And definitely making sure you're not passing what you did with a lighter shade. You want the lighter shade to go the furthest out, the darker shades will kind of fill in smaller and smaller as you apply them. I'm kind of just doing this motion, less of the circular, just kind of patting it and pulling it down. And we're going to do the next darkest shade. So again, this is going to be super redundant, but I'm kind of just patting in a line at the bottom and slowly bringing that shade into the other ones, just kind of like this. And it's in a smaller area now than it was before because this is the third darkest shade. And we're not messing with this top bit yet. We're just going to leave that alone. We're just building the base in the center of your eye. Um, the shade that I just used is this one, so the next step would be black. But I'm not going to start doing that yet. Add a little bit more of this. So using this Morphe M514 which is kind of just, it's a puffy brush, but it has kind of a wider scope to it. I'm gonna take it on its side and kind of get the edge bristles at the end of this whole thing and barely touching, mostly just rubbing it on its side and blending these colors further together in the middle, but barely touching the edge of it so that it's kind of blending upwards but not super intensely. brush is cleaned off again and it's stained pink ignore that go very lightly 
on the edge. This part's going to take a while. Do not rush it because just blending takes a long time. You need to be careful with it. At least if you want it to look even. So kind of we're just taking it along that really harsh line back and forth, little little baby strokes, especially in this corner. You don't want it to go up too high. This part is where you're going to want it to be out the furthest and it'll kind of come in like that. Again, just slowly blending. And it's looking less harsh. This one still looks harsh. We're blending slowly upwards. I'm going to do this one and I'll be right back. Now that they are both muddy around the edges, we're going to take the bigger brush. It's like that one I was just using except way bigger. Um, it is the M441. And we're going to take it around the edges and really just kind of buff it out even further so that it's not just that little bit of area that has the brown, we're kind of spreading it out further. And this can kind of be messy, it doesn't have to be precise. So take this again, this is the E27, I don't know if I ever said that in the first place, but it's the one we applied the brow bone color with, and we're just going to buff that out even more. This one kind of is a softer buff than that one I was just using. So there's no hard edge here the whole thing kind of spreads out so again with this elf brush that doesn't have a number it's just just that guy we are going to take the black in the jacqueline hill palette and start patting same motion as before just patting it down the bottom and brushing it out. Morphe 35B does have a black shade in it and I'm going to use a little bit of that. It looks definitely a lot more pigmented than the Jaclyn Hill one so we're going to be a little bit careful. Oh yeah, already. That is a noticeable difference. So this one we're just going to be kind of a little bit more careful with. But same technique, patting it down here first, making sure that the center of your lid is the darkest part, and then pushing it outwards bit by bit. And now we'll come back when that's done. Black is all over the base at this point. We are going to take this M514 brush again and buff this into the brown very carefully. I do want to point out that black is not the focus of this look because it's going to be a bright blue shade, I swear. It's just a smoky blue. So we have to have this black on bottom. But it doesn't need to be intense on the edges. We just want it to be a muddy balance of dark color. Now that it looks like you have two black eyes, we are going to take this 35V palette and we're going to start actually, sorry I forgot which color, <laughs> it's this one because it kind of, I don't know if you can tell, has like a black glitter in it, um, but it's mostly a very dark blue brush. And this one is interesting to apply. You have to do like kind of a swiping motion to get it to show up.
and you kind of have to go over it quite a few times. This one, the same technique, we're starting down here and well, it's not really the same technique. I'm pushing it kind of aggressively upwards from the bottom instead of patting down or patting and then going down, if that makes sense. And we're pressing pretty hard with this and you can kind of start to see it now a little bit. We really have a base of blue now. I'm taking my M514, muddling in that blue color. Same one, haven't changed it up yet, but we're going to put this in the crease. Since I haven't really gone into the crease with that other brush, because I want it to be light, so we're taking the edges of this brush and just lightly kind of putting this into the rest of that brown-black mixture. Not super hard, but just enough so that your base down here blends into that. And now we're taking I'm going to do the darker shade first, sorry. So we're going to take this guy all the way up here. Um, I don't know if you care about the names of these shades. put it on so I can read it. Um, room for two is what that one is called and we are going to take it. This one is a little bit easier to get on the brush so we're going to take a little swipes of that and again just kind of starting in that base area and dragging it further out blending it into the black blue that we just did a layer of and this one shows up a lot better as you can see because it's already turning this whole thing blue and kind of just barely touching the edge of that because we are going to blend it out better later on the goal here is just to get that blue in there now we're going to go on to rendezvous which is this really bright blue brightest one in the bunch Same process. I know you're tired of hearing me talk about this, but starting down here and going further out. This one is really the one that I like the most just because it's the brightest. It's kind of like a sapphire blue. But now... Sorry. <laughs> Take the Urban Decay All Nighter Spray. Get some of this on my brush. Spritz it. And then take it and put it on the middle because I want this bit to extra to extra be shiny to be extra shiny. And this part I'm just doing the middle of my lid. So we'll leave that. And as you can see now, it's like super super bright blue. So now we have to blend the edges out with. Let's start with precision. So we're gonna go with this guy, wipe it off a little bit because still has that darker color on it. And buff the edges out ever so lightly. So blue blends into that ether that we'll call it. <laughs> that is the top half of this look that we've kind of had been building up on. Okay, so, um, next step, I'm kind of taking that original blue-black shade and brushing it into the crease a little bit, blending the blue with that into the crease. So that that's the darkest area to contrast with the middle of your lid. Little bit by little bit because you don't want it to overwhelm the blue, if that makes sense. To kind of give it a rough once over and for this I'm going only over the very edge first. Where the remains of that original black and brown are. Dragging that out farther than it was.
See how it kind of looks muted on the corner, or, uh, corners, on the edges? And that's really the key to making this look messy but neat at the same time, is just the careful blending of that outer edge. Keeping that brown and black in play, but making sure that the blue is the focal point. But at this point, what I like to do is glue on my lashes because it gives me a feel for where, how high up this part needs to go, really, if I'm going to put more color in it and drag it up even further. Um, I'm again using these, the same lashes as before, the very previous video, the Cuckoo Lashes Angelia, Angelia 303, Amazon, $9 for three of those at a time. And, um, We're going to take our duo brush on glue, just kind of make sure that there's no excess glue on here from the last time I used these, because we are crusty. <laughs> Not really, but kind of. And I'll kind of show you how I do this. I wonder, can you see that very well? Like this. Okay. I don't know what's with that bump in the middle. I don't know. <laughs> Got it though. Okay. So, wave this guy around. But I know I said in my last video I don't like to blow on it because then it dries too quickly or some shit like that, but just. I needed it to dry faster, or at least get tacky faster. Look how much fallout. I look like I have, like, like I'm a chimney sweep, that's what it looks like. We're gonna take tweezers, grab the middle of the lash, make sure you, while well, I'm wiping this, normally I would make sure there's no makeup on my finger that I'm gonna drag right here, but it doesn't matter because we're wiping that off anyways. I'm going to position this as best as we can. Slowly open my eye to check the placement of this and just kind of push it into place. And I've already worn this lash several times so I kind of have it fixed in such a way that when I put it on I know exactly where it's going to land and where it's going to stay glued. And I will usually, after I glue this on initially, press it into place for like a solid 30 seconds or a minute just to make sure that it's not going anywhere. Okay, so that is pretty much glued in place. Um, while that dries, I'm going to do the other one, the same technique, and I'll be right back. So these are both glued in place and I turned my lights down a little bit just so you can see kind of where the lashes are versus where the shadow ends. I don't know if this is helpful at all for being able to tell the difference but it kind of stops right where the lashes stop so then I want to blend my shadow up a little bit further. Personally, that's just how I like to do it. So we're gonna take this big fluffy brush again, the E27. I keep wanting to say it's a five something, but it's not. Um, and out of our blue shades, we're gonna mix together the darker one with the black in it and then the darker of just the blue. So we're gonna tap that just a little bit and then tap that just a little bit and then put that directly in the corner and buff it into the edge and upward a little bit. And remember this side part is gonna come out further than the inside of your eye. Okay, so the bottom of my face is clean now. 
I don't know if you can tell. Um, we are going to go back in with the sponge and the Born This Way and or whatever foundation you have. Just apply that. Okay, so foundation is on. We are going back in with shape tape and doing like I said I was going to do. Not so much product, but tapping it in right there and then on my nose and down here. I'm just kind of covering some blemishes. Blending this in. Okay, so I just really put this in the focal points of my face to brighten it up. Obviously, this is where the light is getting focused now. <laughs> we are going to go back. The 35B palette, um, which is the older Morphe Rainbow palette, we're going to take this shade that I've used a lot of. Um, it's shimmery blue, so you want to spray it with this setting spray to make it stick and more be more shimmery than it would if you didn't spray it. But you have to be careful when you spray it because it causes it to be really blunt when you put it on if you don't do it slowly, it's going to look crazy. Kind of taking this corner of dark shade and blending it down into this. I want the brightest part of the blue to be in the middle and then take the dark shade on the edges. Just kind of gives it some depth and blends the whole thing together. And just do that on both sides. It's done. I like to take the Fenty Beauty uh, matchstick in Confetti. I just kind of, I abused it because it's, it's blue on that side. Ignore that. It's like a purple rainbowy highlighter stick. And I kind of take that and draw it over the center. And it doesn't make it purple, it just makes it like a shinier blue. So that that middle section really stands out. Top this whole thing off, we're just going to take the Maybelline Colossal Volume Express that has hair stuck to it. Ignore that. <laughs> and just put that everywhere. That whole eye look is pretty much done. I'm just going to go back in with this Pirates of the Caribbean Lorac um, highlighter and blush palette. Keeping the focus of that in the corner here and building up outwards. Take this fan brush. That was the M523, by the way, in case you... I know I didn't say that. Um, this one doesn't have a name. It's just a fan brush that I got off Amazon. And then the Lorac Pro Contour Palette again with medium contour. And I like to kind of draw it upwards from the corner, like in the center of my ear. In a triangle going out into the center of my face. And then take the darker shade Deep Contour, as it's called, and do a smaller triangle right in the center of that, just to give it dimension. And then this highlighter is just, it's, it's Starcrush Minerals, which I don't really see them posting anymore, and I think it's because of the scandals that they were in. I got this a long time ago, and it broke, um, so I just kind of used the powder and spritz it. Ooh, 
which makes for an intense highlight, but I feel like it goes with this. And that's the whole thing. It kind of just goes from this really dark brown splotch into bright blue. And again, it doesn't have to be really clean. It's kind of a messier look, but in the end it looks sort of put together, I would say. <laughs> 